Hello, I am Dr. Sitish Kumar Kashid, Professor in Civil Engineering, Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. I am presenting a topic, Alignment of Irrigation Canals. Firstly, we will see definition of irrigation and irrigation canal. Irrigation is the agricultural process of applying control amounts of water to land and to assist the production of crops. A canal is an artificial channel, generally trapezoidal in shape, constructed on the ground to carry water to the fields either from the river or from a tank or a reservoir which is formed due to a tap. So we can see a typical irrigation canal here, transferring water from a dam reservoir. Canals can be classified as main canal, branch canal, distributary, minor and so on. So this schematic gives us the idea about the layout of a canal irrigation system. So this is a river, here there is a diversion head work. From here the canal starts, this is a main canal, main canal provides water to this branch canal. From a branch canal, we can have number of distributaries going in this way. From the distributaries, minors will take water and distribute over the fields through field channels. Now, let us see a reservoir, a river, ground contours and with reference to that, the layout of the canal system. If we see here, so here there is a dam, here there is a dam. So dam is constructed across a valley. So this layout of contours tells us that this is a valley or river flowing in this direction. Now due to construction of dam, we find that the water level is raised and that head which is available due to construction of dam is now useful for driving water in the right bank canal and in left bank canal. Again, water is transferred under gravity. So, if we see, this is 185 meter contour, 170 meter contour, 155 meter contour and so on. So, this water follows a ridge line. So, RBC means right bank canal following a ridge line. This is a left bank canal left bank canal. In initial stages, this canal is following a contour or slightly parallel to the contour, but thereafter it comes on a ridge and transfers water further along a ridge. If there is a power component associated with the dam, then this is a power canal leading water to power station. And again after power generation, water leads to the main river. It is also possible to send water in another valley in this way. Now this may go through say a tunnel or a deep cut and feed the another reservoir in other valley. Canals are not always in cutting nor they are always in filling. Rather it depends upon the alignment and surrounding ground levels. Now, this is a canal section in full cutting. The full supply level of a canal is much below the ground level. This is the canal section in partial cutting and partial filling, partial cutting, partial filling. So this can be ideal section where we can match the excavation and embankment. Canal section also can be in total filling. We do not want to lose the head. That is why it is in total filling. So this is the embankment and over the ground level embankment is constructed and this is a canal passing. The full supply level of the canal is much above the ground level. Now principles of canal alignment. A canal has to be aligned in such a way that it covers the entire area proposed to be irrigated and also with the shortest possible length. 
because if length increases cost increases at the same time the construction of canal including cost of cross drainage works has to be also minimum now there are basically three types of canal alignments one is ridge or watershed alignment of canal next is contour alignment and third is sour slope alignment now let us see a ridge canal or watershed canal ridge canal as we have discussed this figure here so here after construction of a dam the water level is raised and the canal is now brought on the uh, ridge a ridge can be seen from this pattern of contours so canal is brought on the ridge the purpose is that it should irrigate both the sides of a canal that is advantage area no cross drainage works are necessary for this of canal because it passes over a ridge that is advantage of now another type is contour canal now if you see here this is a river so initial stage of a canal it starts here now these are the contour this is a contour this is a contour this is a contour so in initial reach of a canal it is approximately parallel to the contour of course it needs head of water to drive and it arrives on the next contour it means it started from here and it is arriving on the next contour downstream side and then taking a path along a ridge but this portion of a canal can be called as a contour canal and this portion of the canal can be called as a watershed canal contour canal is aligned nearly parallel to the contours of that area just see these are the contours of the area and this is a contour canal portion it is parallel to the contours of the area the contour canal cannot be constructed in hilly regions this type of canal has to pass natural drainages hence cross drainage works are necessary to be provided so when your canal is passing from this place to this place the natural drainages which follow a path perpendicular to the contour naturally canal needs to cross this so natural drainage paths are in this way in this way this canal has to cross those that's why there are number of cross drainage works in contour canal and in hilly regions we find that there are number of channels where we need to construct the cd works across them third type of canal is side slope canal this is a contour of 1000 meter elevation 950 elevation 900 elevation and perpendicular to that it is a side slope channel or side slope canal so naturally it is parallel to the natural drainages so it is aligned perpendicular to the contours of the area it is not located on ridge line or not on the valley but it is approximately between them it is neither it is on the ridge line nor it is in valley but it is in between them the side slope canal is parallel to the natural drainage line and hence no cross drainage works are necessary the slope of the bed level of the side slope canal is very steep because it is going across the contours now here this picture shows a typical view of a river valleys watershed divide lines and a command now see this is one river this is another river and this is a ridge line in between these two rivers now when we bring a canal on this ridge line then it can irrigate on both the sides let us have some question answers which type of canal does not need cross drainage structures side slope canal contour canal watershed canal field channel answer is side slope canal it does not need cross drainage structures second question on flat lands what type of canal alignment is used 
साइड स्लोप कैनॉल कंटूर कैनॉल वाटरशेड कैनॉल और फील्ड चैनल आंसर इज सी वाटरशेड कैनॉल फॉर रिलेटिवली फ्लैट लैंड द स्लोप्स आर रिलेटिवली माइल्ड एंड इनफॉर्म हिंस इट इज वेरी इजी एंड एडवांटेजेस टू अलाइन कैनॉल्स अलॉन्ग वाटरशेड सो वी कैन हैव आइडिया ऑफ कटिंग एंड फिलिंग इन द कैनॉल सिस्टम थ्रू दिस फिगर सो हियर देर इज अ रिवर दिस इज अ डाइवर्जन नाउ वी सी अ कैनॉल इज गोइंग इन दिस वे सो नियर द रिज वेन इट कम्स to save its head we need to go through a deep cutting again here a distributive starts now here there is a side slope canal again we need to go for a heavy cutting here and then the main canal reaches to the another ridge or so so where canal goes in cutting where canal goes in filling one can understand from the layout of contours now curves along a canal as far as possible curves should be avoided in the alignment of canals the curves lead to disturbance of the flow and tendency to silt on the inner bend and scour the toe of the outer bend if curves have to be provided they should be as gentle as possible the permissible radius of the curvature for a channel curve is shorter for line canals than unlined ones because line canals can resist erosion due to lining but unlined canals cannot resist it that's why we can tolerate smaller radius for a line canal but for unlined canal we need to have larger radius to avoid erosion The alignment should be such that the cutting and filling of earth or rock should be balanced as far as possible to keep the cost minimum. Now here you find the minimum radius of curve along a canal. So we will find these are the values for unlined canals. These are the values for lined canals. So we find the radius of curve for unlined canals is on much higher side. as compared to line canals for example say for capacity of canal 30 to 80 meter cube per second in a line canal your minimum radius of curve should be 1000 meter whereas for the similar range say here it can be 300 meter so difference between 1000 meter and 300 meter is due to unlined canal and line canal as you can understand more the discharge more the moment of water more the momentum of water more the erosion capability of water hence as the discharge increases we need to go for gentle curves these are the references that are used for this video thank you